So I managed to get my hands on those new Apple wallets, the MagSafe wallets. That's these ones right here. They've been a kind of uh, controversial topic on the internet because some have suggested that they're, they don't hold on as strongly as they should and they could potentially pop off when you're pulling your wallet from your pocket. There's been a couple videos made. I wanted to test it for myself. Uh, I'm just curious, to be honest. I, I love magnets in most cases, but uh, this time around, it seems when it comes to your cards and your ID, the magnet might not be secure enough, but of course we'll find out in this video. So I have the three different colors of the wallet. There's also a black available. That's the one that I don't have. So here we have a bluish and a yellow and a saddle brown. Now, I also managed to get my hands on the leather cases that came out for the iPhone 12, 12 Pro as well. And they match accordingly to the various different wallets. Actually, the blue is called Baltic blue saddle brown and what's the yellow the yellow is california poppy uh, and then there's a couple of others as well including the product red and the black with no black wallet to go with it so i have the iphone 12 in my pocket i've been using it for a while people don't know if, if i mean it when i say that i use it I, i've been using it every single day and i've had a very thin case on it obviously as you're aware that's the later case but I'm always curious about the other options that are out there. I did a video on every single uh, silicone case. You can go watch that video if you wanna see all those different colors. Let's go ahead and test out these leather ones. This is a premium case. These cases from Apple, $79 Canadian, and the wallets are in Hong Kong prices. Maybe uh, we can get a conversion. Uh, 60 bucks, 60 US for the wallet. Okay, so the wallet's not cheap either. It's not gonna fit a ton of cards. Now, the first thing I wanna try is the wallet on top of my pre-existing case because it's a thin enough case that the other magnetic components and accessories work through this case. The question is, how does the wallet stick? And so I'll just pop this one out. So this is the Saddle Brown, as mentioned. Unboxing experience, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. We have a little bit of paperwork there as well. And uh, we have to slide out whatever's in there already. This is like a placeholder card. Now, the way this wallet works, you do, you are intended to pop it off of your phone prior to removing your card. And the way you're gonna remove your card is by pushing it up through this channel right here and then pulling it out like that. Now, the magnet is just below there. Okay, it sticks. And uh, actually, I got the indicator there that the accessory had been attached. Now, this is something that happens with the various MagSafe products, you attach them and then you get this cool indicator because it is a first party accessory. It's all part of Apple's ecosystem. Now, this appearance is not so bad, to be honest, and it grips pretty nicely through the thin case. So if you were wondering if this was gonna work with other cases, I would say if they're thin enough, yeah, it's no problem. However, it can pop off. I mean, that's the thing about a magnet securing your cards. And depending on which cards you put in here, that could be an issue. The fact that it uh, pops off relatively easily However, if they made it fit on strong, the problem there would be, where would you grip it and could you get it off as easily and elegantly as you'd like when you go to pay for something? So, uh, look, for me, I'm using digital payments, tap payments for almost everything. So I don't have a huge need for a wallet in the first place. I keep my ID uh, in, in, in the car in most cases or sometimes not at all. Uh, why can't we have ID on our phones? They do in Korea, right? You have the... Yeah, I mean, we just need the ID on the phones and we're all set. But some people still need to carry around cards. Now, if we do remove the case altogether, I presume we're going to have an even stronger connection. And so now, just living on the phone, it's, ah, uh, you know what? It's still pretty much the same. It comes off pretty easily. Now, the next factor in this, uh, per in this particular experiment is what happens when you get the Apple specific case because the leather case adds extra magnets to it in the same orientation as the accessories. And so presumably that would be as strong of a connection, if not more strong than what the phone is capable of itself. Now, as far as the leather case is concerned, it is genuine leather. It is genuine leather. Uh, you, you, can, you can see you have your cutout here for the entire camera module. Your buttons end up getting remapped because it does flow over top of the entire smartphone. So your power switch in the case of the red case is this kind of metallic finish over here. You have cutouts for your speaker, microphone, and charge port. 
And then there's a little groove as well for your notification switch as well as your volume rockers, which are also remapped. Now, the nice thing about a leather case is that over time, and this is going to be a personal preference thing, but over time, as you use it, it gets nicked up a little bit. You might call it a patina. Some people think it can uh, actually get better with age as you see the age worn on top of it. Maybe not so much with the red color, but definitely the saddle brown. I don't even think... I don't even think you're doing saddle brown correctly if it doesn't have a little bit of wear and tear on it. So let's go ahead and check that one out. This would have to be near the top of the list for my selections. I know some might think it's a little bit boring comparatively, but it's just a classic leather color. Of course, the fit's going to be exactly the same here. And in the case of this case, uh, we're going to have a match with the saddle brown wallet. All right, so let's get to the big question here of the pocket test because I've seen these pocket tests and I've talked about them previously on the Lou Later show and and I mean I'm I, I'm a little bit nervous about using this in the pocket with important cards in it because it may pop out unknowingly it's possible so let's go ahead and just stand up for a moment now I am not wearing super tight pants which I think is a key consideration some people they're wearing the tight pants in which case uh, there's going to be a little bit more drag on the wallet itself, but for me, on a, I guess an average, maybe a regular fit pant, it's a non-issue. It's coming out no problem. Oh, I do have a back pocket, but again, it's a very loose fitting back pocket. And over here, it's too loose. Like for me, it's not a problem. However, however, one of the issues, my issue with the wallet thing is that the wall. I mean, it did budge a little bit. It did budge a little bit. Well, uh, no, my thing is more around using the phone, right? The phone is is. I'm I'm not improving my experience having this wallet on here. I'm carrying a little bit more. So if my wallet stayed in my pocket instead of coming out with my phone, which is the intention here, then once I got the phone out, I'm I've got a thinner experience. I mean, I went out of my way to make the thinnest case I possibly could because I want to enjoy the phone as thin as possible. Of course, that's not the intention here. I do like the idea of carrying one less thing, and there have been cases in the past that uh, obviously focus on sticking a card slot into a typical case without the magnetic connector, but I just never found myself fully adopting the idea because I just prefer to use the phone without the extra weight. Now, as far as cards are concerned, let's see how many cards we can fit in here. Yeah, this is the... Oh, uh, God, which brand is this? I think it's from Ander Wallace. I've been using this for a while, actually, and it has this little pull tab. It's very thin on its own, but normally it wouldn't even be in my pocket for the most part since it just has a couple of cards, and uh, I just don't typically need it. I guess if I was traveling or something, it would be different, but my cards are on my phone in most cases, and if I'm buying something expensive, that's typically online, so I don't really have to have all my cards with me uh, most of the time. All right, so I have uh, a couple of... Uh, cards here. We've compiled some nothing cards here for the purpose of this test and uh, So we'll go ahead and insert one. Can you use it with one card? Absolutely you can and it actually stays in there and you simply pop it out just by sliding up on the back again You take the wallet off as we move to the second card still no problem slide them out and the third card I believe is basically gonna max this out right here. Yeah, I don't think you'd want to stretch a fourth you could probably but you start stretching the leather out. So it's a three card setup and it's gonna add some weight to your whole phone. Now it is cool to magnets and all the rest of it, but like I said, if you've got some tight pants on, I don't doubt that this can slide off, maybe just as likely on the way into the pocket. So for example, if it were, if it were to get hooked, if you were in a hurry and it were to get hooked on the edge of the pant, you can see it kind of pops off. And this is uh, some of the stuff I've seen in tests with thicker pants jeans, things like this. So it's something to keep in mind. All right, as far as the other colors are concerned, this could be another favorite, the Baltic Blue. Maybe people pick this up with the blue version of the phone. Now you can mix and match. You could have, I mean, look at that. The saddle brown with the Baltic Blue. It, it got a little bit of a hum over here. And the Baltic Blue will do a little mismatch. Look at that, all right? Something for every occasion. It looks better when it doesn't match, according to Kirk. We'll just place these ones out. 
California Poppy, which that's a vibrant, that's a vibrant leather as far as leathers go. And there's a match. And last up, we have the black case, which actually might end up being my preference of the entire bunch if I were going to go for it. And let's go ahead and try the black on with the graphite iPhone 12 Pro. And that's your look right there. That's, like I said, that's probably my preference of the bunch. This is another one that I think can actually look better over time as it develops that leather patina. But uh, you have some selections, you have some options to choose from, and they will, of course, interact with all the magnetic accessories and wireless chargers and so forth that you can get for your new iPhone. Of course, my selection in most cases remains the thinnest possible, but I do think it's cool that Apple has ensured that this functionality exists even through third-party cases because you may not select their first-party options and you may feel like you're missing out as far as using some of those other accessories, whether it be the wallet or the magnetic charger or something like this, and you can still use it just fine even with a third-party case. So that's kind of cool. The thing about these cases is the actual structure of them. So I've had some of these in the past, and it's not the leather that gives way. It's a very thin leather, but it's the structure is uh, like a cardboard or a very thin... I can't remember. I mean, I didn't... I haven't cut one of these open in a while, but you can tell it's a pretty flimsy material. Now, that's on purpose to make the thing extremely lightweight, but sometimes when you buy a leather good, you expect that it's going to last a really long time. Uh, even people like me mentioning the potential for patina on there, but just keep in mind, the structure of it is quite thin and you, it may be not what you expect for the money. Actually, the ultimate version of a leather case would be something like this, uh, a rigid internal structure potentially made of aramid and then wrapped in leather. Now you have the strength associated with this material, but that would probably be too expensive to use. But anyway, uh, nonetheless, just keep that in mind to save weight. It's not the most rigid thing. Anyway, I don't think I'm going to use this on the daily. It's a thing that exists. I think if you pick this up, it's important to remember that you got to be a little bit more careful in and out the pocket and don't assume that it's glued there because it certainly is not and it really can't be because you got to be able to pop it off when you want to. And you don't want to, I mean, imagine struggling with the neodymium type of grip. It might be too much. So Apple had a tough thing to do here. Did they oversell it in the presentation? Maybe. Maybe people need to get out and test it and figure out the benefits and drawbacks. Or you can just listen to my advice. It's probably not a substitute for a real pocket wallet. It's uh, somewhere in between.